This is video number two of the five videos that will explain confidence intervals to you. Be sure to watch all five. In the first video, you actually understood how a confidence interval is able to give us an estimate of the population mean. And now you understand why we can say that we're 95% confident that the population mean is actually in the confidence interval. Now you're ready and worthy to actually do the calculations. Wouldn't it be a sad situation for a student to be doing the calculations without understanding how and why it works? Why, that would be a miserable experience. The sample size n was 36, and the sample mean, x bar, was 8.25 inches. And for now, you're going to humor me when I claim we actually know that the population standard deviation is equal to 2.25 inches. Ah, don't worry. In video number four, you will learn how to make confidence intervals when the population standard deviation is not known. But first, you've got some concepts to learn, such as the distance we go above and below the sample mean is called the margin of error. It's also called the error tolerance. It's represented by the capital letter E. Remember where this distance originally came from? It's the distance we need to go above and below the center of the sampling distribution in order to contain the middle 95% of all the possible sample means that we could ever possibly get. Let's look at how we would calculate the margin of error E. This Z is how many standard errors you have to go above and below the population mean in order to contain the middle 95% of all the possible sample means we could ever possibly get. And of course, you remember that this 95% is our confidence level which is how confident we are that the interval will actually contain the population mean in it somewhere. The other part of this formula, I sincerely hope that you recognize as the standard error of the sampling distribution for the sample mean. It's the length of each of those tick marks in the sampling distribution for the sample mean. So, if you take how many standard errors you need and multiply that with the size of the standard error, you get the distance you need to go above and below the population mean in order to contain the middle 95% of all the possible sample means. And you saw in our video number one how we straddled this distance around our sample mean. But far more important than that, you understood how this method enabled you to be 95% confident that the interval actually contained the population mean in it somewhere. When we go approximately two standard errors above and below the population mean, we will contain the middle 95% of the sample means. But instead of rounding off to two, Let's be a little more exact and round off to the fourth decimal place, which would give us 1.9600. Are you wondering how we came up with that 1.9600? We used a skill that you learned earlier in your statistics course, but I can give you a brief review. Make a sketch of the middle 95% in the standard normal distribution. Use this sketch to help you visualize the area under this curve that's in each tail. If we have 95% of the area centered in the middle, that leaves us with 5% for the tails. Half of 5%, which is 2.5%, is in each tail. 
the z-score that separates the typical middle 95 percent from the unusual 5 percent is called the critical value. If the area to the right of the critical value is 2.5 percent, what would the area to the left have to be? It's 100 percent minus 2.5 percent equals 97.5 percent. Now that you know the area to the left of our critical value z is 0 0.975, you could use the standard normal distribution table to look up the z-score. Find the 0 0.975 inside the table. Then combine the row heading, 1.9, with the column heading, 0 0.06, to get 1.96. Using this table, you can only go out to two decimal places. Press the second key, then the VARS key, then press 3, to select inverse norm, the first value it needs is the area to the left, which is 0 0.975. Press the comma key, then we can enter in 0 for the center of the standard normal distribution. Press the comma key, and then enter 1 for its spread. Press the right parenthesis key and then press the enter key. So if you wanted to, you could go out nine decimal places. But we will be pretty content to just round off at the fourth decimal place. So what do you get? The number at the fifth decimal place is six. So we round up at the fourth decimal place, which results in a value of 1.9600 for our critical value. This tells us that for any normal sampling distribution, if we go 1.9600 standard errors above and below the population mean, we will contain the middle 95% of all the sample means. How do we know our sampling distribution for the sample mean is at least approximately normal? Because our sample size is large enough, at least 30. If you didn't know the answer to that one, you can re-watch the first video where I explain that in a little more detail. We have all of the values that we need in order to plug everything into our equation. We just found that the critical value z is 1.9600. The population standard deviation is equal to 2.25 inches. And the sample size n is 36. Plug these values in and do the calculation and you will get the margin of error E is equal to 0 0.735 of an inch. Now all we need to do is take this margin of error E, 0 0.735, and subtract it from the sample mean, 8.25, to get the lower bound of our confidence interval. Then add the margin of error E to the sample mean to get the upper bound of our confidence interval. We will round our answers off to the same number of decimal places as the data that was given to us. Now for the most important part, interpret your answer so that anyone can understand it. Even someone who has never taken a statistics class. Yes, I know! We are talking about a very unsophisticated, uncouth class of simple folks here. 
But hey, it was their choice to go through life without taking a statistics course. But even they will be able to understand this. We are 95% confident that the population mean is between 7.52 and 8.99 inches. Well, that's a pretty generic interpretation. Let's state it in context. We are 95% confident that the population mean length for all of the fish in this lake is between 7.52 and 8.99 inches. Let's use our TI-8384 calculator to check our hand calculations. Press the STAT key. Press the right arrow key twice to highlight TESS. Press the 7 key to select Z interval. Highlight STATS by using this right arrow key and then hit ENTER to select it. Now we just enter in the values for each one that it asks for. You will need to press the down arrow key to move down to the next line. We enter 2.25 for the population standard deviation. And then press the enter key. We enter 8.25 for the sample mean. And then press the enter key. Enter 36 for the sample size and 0.95 for the confidence level. Double check your entries and then with the flashing cursor on calculate, press the enter key. Does this match our hand calculations after we round off at the second decimal place? Oh yes! So what did we learn in this video? We learned how to calculate by hand a 95% confidence interval for the population mean when the population standard deviation is known. And then we learned how to get this confidence interval using our TI-8384 calculator. But how do we calculate a confidence interval that uses a different confidence level from 95%. For example, how would we calculate a 98% confidence interval for the population mean? Watch video number three from this five video set. Confidence intervals part three, can you handle this much glee? But how do we calculate a confidence interval when the population standard deviation is not known. Watch video number four from this five video set. Confidence intervals part four, the one you've been waiting for. But how do we calculate a confidence interval for the population proportion? Watch video number five. Hey, here's a bonus feature for this video. I am 95% confident that the sample means... Oh, why? We are 100% confident that the sample mean is in the interval. It's smack dab in the center, silly. You need to say population mean or else I'll pop you again. There's a 95% probability that one randomly selected fish is between... Oh! We are not calculating the probability of one randomly selected fish being selected in a certain interval. As you recall, you would need to know what the population mean is equal to in order to calculate that. And since we don't know what it's equal to, we can't calculate the probability. Your interpretation is so misleading, you deserve the beating! So, are you ready to watch video number three now? I'd rather play some World of Warcraft now! Whoa!